Mauritania and Algeria met in match day three, Group D action at the Total Energies Africa Cup of Nations Cote d'Ivoire 2023. Algeria needed only a draw to advance beyond the group stages and into the knockout stages, but they started positively and looked like they were going for a victory. Early opportunities, including this one for Hussein Moir, presented themselves to the Desert Foxes, but they were unable to break the deadlock and genuinely test Baba Karnias for the Mauritania goal. Mandrea pushed away from the corner. The full-off effort, though, was eventually blocked by Tugai, but fell to the Mauritania captain on the day, and Yali Delay would not be denied. A shot that was not necessarily hit flush found its way into the back of the Algerian net, and his goal separated the sides going into the break. Algeria made some changes, including bringing on Riyad Mahrez in the second half. Baghdad Bounajar came close to nipping the ball into the back of the Mauritanian net as he tucked in front of Baba Karnias on that occasion. Mauritania, though, continued to push and they continued to test the Algerian defence and indeed Mandrea in the Algerian goal. They did not sit back and try to manage their lead. Instead, they went for a cushion goal, which they ultimately could not find. And Mandrea put under pressure on more than one occasion. Algeria, in the closing stages of this match, were looking for something special. Asa Mandi got himself in a very advanced position and was unable to poke the ball beyond Baba Karnias. As Algeria fell ever closer to crushing out of this Africa Cup of Nations tournament in the group stages for the second edition in succession. Baba Karnias. Making sure that Algeria did not score. The eventual man of the match separating the sides, Delay's goal, creating history as a resilient Mauritania claimed a historic first victory at the Africa Cup of Nations, their first in nine matches, and they advanced courtesy of this victory to the knockout stages of this AFCON. Algeria go home, Mauritania advance courtesy of the 1-0 victory. Defending African champions. So highlights from the third and final game for both Senegal, the defending African champions, and Guinea in Group C in Yamasukro, the Ivorian capital. A West African derby to finish things off for both sides. Guinea in red, Senegal in white. And Sadio Mane was through here, trying to break the deadlock. This was midway through the second half, and the goal gaping at his mercy. And the great man just couldn't guide it in with Guinea's goalkeeper, Ibrahim Kone, beaten. Crepin Jatta, the Senegalese right back. Lovely delivery for once from him. And the freedom of the six yard box for Abdelai Sek, who headed home. He didn't play in the 2021 Nations Cup despite being in the squad. He never got off the bench, never got on the pitch. He has tonight, and look at that. Powered past Kone, didn't have a prayer, as his uh, defence failed to do its job. Sec with his second Senegalese goal, and then uh, in a moment, Jai paid it through to Mane, who thought he had scored his 10th Senegalese goal at a Nations Cup. Not so clearly offside. Nice idea, though, from the Marseille man and Jai to Mane, the uh, two-time African footballer of the year, and then they broke up play. So good at doing that, Senegal. One of the features of their game, and then they open it up to the right-hand side. Look at the pass into Njai, and he buried it into the bottom corner. Thank Mane for the uh, simplest of passes into his stride. And Uniman Njai, his first Nations Cup, has his first goal as well. And then Guinea, well, they needed a goal, and if they had scored one, they would have made it through in second in the group. And this could have been it. Morgan Golibagi putting out a top draw save from Edouard Mendy in the 93rd minute. Look at the technique from both players. A really strong left hand from Mendy to deny Guinea, meaning they finished the group in third because Cameroon beat the Gambia to move second. It ended in Yamasukro. Guinea, nil. Senegal you go through with three wins out of three, two.
are the highlights for the final. Group D game for both the sides, Angola and Burkina Faso, who both started the match in Yamasutro. All the previous games of the group in Wacke, but obviously the final kickoffs mean this one was moved to the Ivorian capital. Four points apiece they both had at the start. Lisa Cabore failing to hit the target there after being uh, closed down by Kilito. The central theme of the game, the uh, impressive displays of the uh, Angola centre-backs. This was the goal that uh, had the game changed for so long. Freddie Sweeney in his first assist of the tournament and Mabalulu, the 34-year-old, out to the side for two years until recently, getting his second goal of the tournament. His first from open play, because his first was a penalty. This was a lovely ball in from Cabaret. And uh, Gustavo Sangare scored at the last Nations Cup in uh, the 2021 edition. <laughs> Guide his header on target. Bango Wacho was then in. Once again, he can trouble Neblu. In the Angola goal, once again, pressure from the uh, central defender for Angola, making it hard. Lovely ball that inside the field. I can look at that bit of goalkeeping from the 30-year-old Neblu, based in Angola with Primero de Augusto. And just made it really, really hard for Dango Wacharap to have any space to get it past the super goalkeeping. Strike from distance this from Stefan Aziz Key wasn't going to trouble. The Angola number one. And then the moment to seal the match. Come back from Zito Lubumbu, the substitute to the other substitute, Jeremy Tadak. And another man who has come off the bench, Zivi, fired into a gaping goal. The 20 year old, year old late in the game, to put this match to bed and ensure that Angola reached the knockout stages for the first time since 2010, when they hosted the competition. They also went through the group stage unbeaten for the first time since that tournament on home soil 14 years ago. It ended in Yamasukro and go to top in Group D after beating Burkina Faso to their delight by two goals to nil. So Zambia faced Morocco in their final game in uh, Group F uh, in San Pedro. Zambia knowing that they needed a draw to be sure of going through to the round of 16. And uh, Morocco knowing that they were already qualified, but not necessarily as group winners. Morocco were solid in all departments. Uh, Zambia outplayed in most of the first half, but uh, did create one or two chances. This uh, effort uh, from Lawrence Masonda easily collected. Atraf Hakimi, another great game from him. Difficult for Lawrence Malenga to contain that, and it was Hakim Ziyech on 38 minutes finally getting the breakthrough for the Atlas Lions. They very much deserved that and continued to, to attack. Bufal feeding El Kabi, who could well have converted that one. Second half action, and uh, Richardson came on as a sub and uh, impressed. Adley too combining with him in this move, but not enough power on that one. Zambia made substitutions that uh, made them look more potent. Lemek Banda, who started the game, one of their more productive players. Coming close with that chance, but time started to run out. Kings Kangwa came on as a sub. Lubambu Musanda tried from range. Then it became frustrating for Zambia as Morocco continued with some of their own attacks. Substitute Tisudali wasting that chance. Patson Daka fed this one through and Emmanuel Banda put it over. Dying minutes. Atraf Hakimi venturing forward and uh, Richardson has spilled into the path of Tissoudali who wasted another chance but Morocco got the job done and they beat Zambia by a goal to nil to win the group. Zambia eliminated.
walked into this game knowing it would be a showdown, any mistake, any mishap, and one would be collecting quite a bit of a hefty penalty. Well, the free kicks came in there, one of the earlier shots on target from Congo, and looked like it would be just a precursor for what the rest of the match would be. One-way traffic, Congo having the lion's share of spells in offensive, and literally the highlights will be all about them. Unable to get to the goal, Likely in some part due to the heroics of Manula, who did manage to make some saves. But Gail Kakuta, man of the match, inspired performance, literally making sure he ticked all the boxes to keep the Leopards in the running. Chancel Mbemba did put aside his defensive heroics today and attempt to get onto the attack. He managed to just only get that ball to the goalkeeper. And in this instance, a louder pro went through the stadium as many thought a penalty had been given or had been granted, but it wasn't to be, and the game stayed as it was. Good defending from Ibrahim Hamad to keep the scoreline goalless and keep the type of stars hoping. In this instance, Mishakamura swinging wildly, sending that ball high and wide into the night sky. It was only just the type of stars continuing to hope that their moment would settle. And for Congo, taking their chances at will, this probably was the closest they got to goal. Wissa trying to lob that past the keeper. Manula, it's um, uh, superhuman strength, stretching acrobatically to just tip that over the bar and send it out wide for a corner. The celebration allowed them a momentary moment of relief before the attacks came in hard and quick again, and another shoot there. This time again from Wissa, and going over the bar. Just unable to get that on target. The Typhusters were really and had to be put out of their misery in the end. When the final whistle settled through and the dust came to the ground, it was the Leopards that were in celebration and jubilant mode. The Typhusters will be heading home their tournament done. Full time, the Amadou Koulibaly Stadium. Tanzania nil. Congo Democratic Republic nil. He had already ensured their progression. Rian Hanamu was in lots of uh, tussles with the Fuseni Chapate early on. This was flagged for offside, but encouraging sign for the brave warriors. Not uh, too much excitement in the first half, but Fuseni Jabate ignited it on occasions. This, a uh, fiery shot saved by Lloyd uh, Kadapwa. Dion Hotto putting this corner in. As uh, Namibia showed that they were happy to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a much higher ranked uh, opponent. Uh, Museo had this opportunity. Second half early on, Namibia were looking the better team. Valley then slowly started to exert themselves. But uh, Namibia were happy to plug away when they could and create their own chances. Shiweather there to a Dion Hotto. A skewed way off target, but uh, the Mali defence is always looking fairly solid. Amari Traore with this effort, which had gone over the line. Chance from a free kick. This was on target from uh, Dante, substitute, as Mali launched a challenge in the final minutes of the game, and as Namibia desperately trying to hang on to make history. Substitute Ibrahim Sissoko with good work, shakes off two men. But Halasi Kamara's effort uh, was blocked. And they did enough to make history and qualify for the knockout stage for the first time as it ended a Bibia nil, Mali nil.
highlights here then with some uh, wonderful scoring there from Benchimol. A snapshot effort there to offer Caverde the lead in this clash against Egypt and the total energy that's the Cup of Nations 2023. And then this. Higazi threading the ball through to Tracer Gay underneath the legs of Ozinia. That was such an important goal, of course. And it saw them clamber back and put themselves level with Cape Verde. Already qualified, of course. And the substitute making his mark. And then they went again. And some fantastic play pushing forward. With another great shot from Trezeguet, just underlining his importance. Coming off the bench, Orsino with a wonderful save. What a delivery it was to Mohamed Mustafa. Great first touch, beautiful finish. Comes off his chest and not his arm, went to VAR. The delivery from Trezeguet over the top of Orsino to offer them a 2-1 lead. Went to the VAR, just to check if it was handball off the, off the pecs, in fact. And that was the moment that they were given the lead. This is in extra time, but it's not over yet. Cape Verde pushing forward. They get themselves the equaliser right at the wire. An unbelievable finish here. And that was the last kick, literally, of the game. 2-2, but because Mozambique had clawed back to a 2 all draw with Ghana, both Cape Verde and Egypt qualified for the round of 16. here from this absolutely sensational encounter at uh, Stade Alassane Watra Olympique in uh, Abidjan. Four changes for the Ivory Coast, none for Equatorial Guinea. Their only opportunity in the first half tucked away by Emilio Insueo to give them a shock one to lead at half-time. Insueo's uh, fourth of the tournament. Continuing where he left off from that uh, hat-trick scored against Guinea uh, Bissau in the previous round. Then Jean-Philippe Cross over what uh, they thought was the equaliser, but just largely offside. The second decision going against the Ivorians in the first half, Midland Sangani was also uh, also the back in there, was the back by the VAR. Then a free kick, Pablo Gannett makes it 2-0 with an absolutely sensational strike. is in the offing. No chance for a goalkeeper for Fana. Superb free kick, keeping up the high quality of set pieces we've seen at this African Cup of Nations finals in the Ivory Coast. Then on the breakaway, as the Ivorians were pushing forward, looking for an equaliser in Sleo, set up by Jose Machin. Goal, the misery increased for the home fans. Tucked away neatly, number five of the tournament for the 34-year-old. He plays his football in the third division in Spain. He is a world beater at the moment here at the Cup of Nations, and they could not believe what they were seeing on that Tepidorian bench. There was more to come. This effort from Siaka blocked. A follow-up from Yannick Bulla. In the back of the net, a goal perhaps scuffed the final shot, but uh, bouncing in nevertheless. And the Ivorians could not believe what they were seeing. Tears at the end for the host nation, joy for Equatorial Guinea, 4-0 it ended.
So look at the highlights now from this game between Mozambique and uh, Ghana. There were four changes for the numbers coming into this match. Ghana with just one, and Hucky Williams dropped uh, from the line, and Joseph Pencil given an opportunity. Both sides with a single point from their opening two matches, but Jordan Ayew, after 15 minutes, uh, putting the next stars into the lead. And at that stage, they were both forced to finish second in uh, Group B and book their place in the next phase of the Cup of Nations. Another opportunity for them in the second half. This handball by Manuel, though, the referee from Libya was certainly busy uh, today. The ball coming in uh, from Kudus, catching uh, Reynildo on the arm, very unlucky. So close as well to the player, but penalty given. Jordan Ayew with a chance for a second from uh, the spot kick. He made no mistake, so two out of two for him as uh, Ghana continued their progress towards the last 16. Remember, they were knocked out in the uh, first round of the competition two years ago in Cameroon where the Camors inflicted a rather embarrassing defeat on them. Into the final stages here, yeah, Mozambique certainly dominating 60% of the possession in the uh, second half. They got a penalty here on the stroke of full time. It struck Dede Ayu on the hand and the referee awarding his third spot kick of the day. There's the outstretched hand of the Ghanaian skipper. Record breaker, by the way, 37th appearance in the finals. Jenny Katamo tucked this away to give Mozambique some hope in these closing stages. What a finish we had here as the Mumbers from 2-0 down at the 90-minute mark fought their way back. They got the draw. This is how it came. Jenny Katambo header at the back of the What a stunning goal for Mozambique. Two all four means Ghana finished third in the group with only two points. Mozambique are last. They're out of the competition. They leave though with their heads held high. And effectively, they've knocked the Black Stars out of the Africa Cup of Nations for a second successive tournament at the first phase. 2-0 it was to Ghana, 2-2 it ended. These are the highlights from this uh, Group A encounter, Total Energy Africa Cup of Nations, battle between Guinea-Bissau and Nigeria. Guinea-Bissau already eliminated with two losses in straight matches. Nigeria, four points and keen to get a point or a win here in Abidjan. Well, Nigeria working really hard to push the ball up long, and in 38th minutes, that was the header down by Oliena into the half of Moses Simon. He delivers a fierce ball in the penalty box towards Victor Osimhen, and it's Opa Sangante who smashes the ball in past his own goalkeeper, Jonas Mendes. In the second half, more danger here, and that was an opportunity for Victor Osimhen. Now, would have been given had he not had balls with this ball that just came up into his hand there from the goalkeeper, Mendes. Goal disallowed by the referee, Bushra Kabubi. A little bit later on, it's Aino with a chance to drop the perfect cross towards Osimhen. Could get his head is steered towards the goal. And Jonas Mendes watches the ball bounce away. And an excellent shot coming in from Bransolino. Long range effort there. Heading towards the corner. Perfectly struck. Perfectly saved by Noabali. Look dangerous. Guinea Bissau on the attack. Fantastic shot there coming in. And uh, there was an offside call there going against Guinea Bissau. And this was another scoring opportunity. And as you can see, there's another handball by Victor Osimhen. Despite the fact that the ball went into the back of the net, it was uh, disallowed. Yes, said the referee. And the final whistle blown as Nigeria qualified for the round of 16. The final score here in Abidjan, Guinea-Bissau nil, Nigeria 1, Nigeria through, Guinea-Bissau go home.